Hi, it's Sue Ricks here from the Sue Ricks Academy. I'm delighted to welcome you today to an interview that I'm doing with my lovely colleague, uh, who's also a lovely friend now, uh, we met through reflexology of Christina Powell. So hi, Christina. Hello. Hello. Lovely to see you, <laughs> Sue. <laughs> and I've invited Christina to come along and talk to us today uh, about a subject that she knows all too well about. And this is about grips. Uh, some of you may have heard about it. Some of you won't have heard about it. Um, and we've had many a discussion about grips and what it is and how it affects people. So would you like to start off, Christina, by, by telling us a little bit um, about uh, CRIPS and 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 more about what it is and then we can talk about the reflexology side as well. Thank you Sue. Perhaps I come to it in a, a slightly weird way. This word CRIPS, um, my journey started um, with being told I had CRIPS and I thought CRIPS, all I could think of was the way children say crisps and can't say crisps. So I thought what is this thing called CRIPS. I'll come back to my journey, but first of all, CRIPS um, is sort of the medical diagnosis is very little understood. It's called complex regional pain syndrome, hence CRIPS. It's a very, very little known to this day and understood um, condition. Um, so CRIPS is actually a pain that people experience that's totally out of proportion to the injury they might have received. So it can be something as simple as a knock on a limb. It usually occurs um, in sort of your distal regions, your, your feet and um, legs or arms. That's the usual place for it. Um, and medical science says in its wonderful way, Sense, it's a sensory and autonomic um, dysfunction. And so your central um, nervous system experiences pain or records pain. So, and I thought, hmm, this isn't fun because I actually want to get back to my life. Um, I was referred to the pain management um, program and had some wonderful, wonderful eight week support. However, during that um, time when there were a, sort of a multidisciplinary approach to looking at how you are mentally, how you're physically moving, because movement is important um, in any sort of part of keeping your body going and your mind healthy, whether it's your mind moving or your body moving. And I came away with a lot, including um looking at diet looking at other things however it wasn't enough for me and it was at that time i kept coming back to my original training of reflexology so that's when i found sue and sue said to me let's talk this through because i actually wanted i craved physical touch i really craved physical touch um, you know, it was extraordinary being able to watch the change in your physiology, in your eyes, in your yeah. whole persona yeah. of knowing that you were in control. Yeah. And your body and your brain was in control. And that's fine. I will just listen. That led over a period of time to you saying to me, I think you might be able to touch my foot, which was the thing that you craved but it was it too was. scary. We did tears of joy when you were able to receive some human physical loving touch, but it came with huge patience and very much a real stillness, a real peacefulness and, and gradually. So when we were coming in to, to, to touch Christina's foot and we knew we were both knew we were building towards that. So we'd gradually done this, you know, is it okay? Is it okay? Is it okay? So can you hear, I'm always saying to her, is it okay? So whoever your client is, it's always, is that okay? Do you think you'll be okay? With the promise that I will stop at any second that I get a, a mere hint from you. Yeah. Because some people, and that's where it, it, I related to me and I related it to you, Christina, is if I'm in trouble, 
I actually can't speak. Uh, yes. So that's very difficult for me. So if something's wrong, I go silent. Well, that's not terribly helpful. <laughs> so I <laughs> promised Christina, as I would do any client, and I've now worked with two other people who've had Crips, is that I will watch for your signals as well as listen. The people that are coping better and, and this is something they admit to is they found strategies and one of them is laughter and one of them is complementary therapies where they have trust and reflexology to me is about that trust because it encompasses everything that crips is i think that when anybody who has got crips is looking for a practitioner who may be able to help them, I would probably suggest that you have a chat with that person and get to know them and find out whether they're the right person for you to work with. Because I personally know that I've met some staggeringly beautiful complementary practitioners. And you know, you have trained with me in gentle touch reflexology and we're both pretty passionate about gentle touch reflexology, we are. aren't we? Yeah. Um, and you know, so you're, you know, you're out there practicing. So if anybody wants to get in touch with you, uh, the information is up on the, the screen on this, on this one. So you can, they can get in touch with you, um, which is uh, cpreflexology at gmail.com. So she reading it. Um, so they can get in touch with you. Is that all right, Christina, if they want any Thank more you. help with that? Um, you know, if you want to know the gentle touch reflexology techniques that I was using with Christina, um, it's all on the Sue Ricks Academy. You can go on there and you can see the techniques. If you want to stand, you know, if you want to understand more about energy and how that works and energetic techniques, it's all on the Academy for there for you as well. So lots of love to everybody. Thank you, Christina, and lots of love to everybody who's watching. Bye bye. Bye.